Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach. Round 5, it's going to be the team list reaction. We, uh, there's, there's actually, there's, there's quite a bit to look for here. I know there's potentially some, uh, some ins and outs, so I'm keen to see how this affects, uh, potentially trades because I, I was pretty much I was pretty much locked into my trades barring a few different things so let's have a look I see straight away Xavier Willison is out <laughs> so that's that's one um for the storm the big one I want to see no no Joe Chan okay so this first game Broncos v Storm has completely thrown out my trade plans because I was pretty much locked in to trading down to Chan and then probably getting rid of either Pharmacilli or Sam Hughes for Willison. But now there's no Joe Chan and there's no Xavier Willison. <laughs> there's none of them, right? Honestly, it's like, it's completely fine because I was probably going to have to use a boost to bring in all the cheapies, which didn't feel great to do. Um, it would have been nice for cash and cash gen, but... Um, yeah, that's that's throwing a spin in the work. So yeah, Eli Katara is still there. Is he <sighs> Okay, he's not on the extended, so I'm assuming this hand infection. It's like it's like last year, Eli Katoa. This was a this was frustrating because I had him. I had him at a point, Eli, Eli Katoa. He had that eye issue and it was gonna be a week and then it turned into two and then three. I I don't know. I I haven't heard anything about uh, the chain situation, but I mean, for me, like, it's, I do want to bring him in, like, I, I really hope he comes back into the starting side, because he would be, he's just such a great, cheapy downgrade playing in the second row, but the longer it goes where he doesn't play, potentially more chance for him to not regain the spot, I mean, I don't think Sean Bloor was that good last game, but if he has a, if he has a crack at this one, then... You never know, so that'll be an interesting watch for sure. Uh, I didn't look at the other, so obviously, yeah, Cameron Munster has been named, I guess. I, that could be a, another late mail, just check if uh, Munster is actually fully fit, good to go. The rest of the back line is what you would expect. Jerome Hughes, uh, Kamakamitha, Liera still at lock, and uh, the bench, as you expect, Tyron Wishart goes back to the fourteen. And for the Bronx, I think it's, well, obviously Willison being out changes things. So the back line as is. Obviously, it's great to see Tristan Sale is still there. I mean, it's terrible that Reese Walsh is injured, but I got to say, it's, I love, I love getting to see Tristan Saylor run around. He's, he's way too good to be playing uh, reserves. Then you got, so Corey Jensen, Fletcher Baker, Jane Hunt still in for Pia Cora. And uh, Ben Takura comes in for his debut, which will be very exciting. Um, I do, like, he's got, like, he's a big man. He's very talented. I do think Takura is probably, he's probably at the stage where, yeah, you could blood him. He's probably a little bit fresh uh, compared to Willison. I think Willison was, was good to go. Takura, we'll see. I mean, maybe he comes out and kills it. I, I think he'll do okay, but I'm not expecting massive things from Takura here, but uh, I'm very excited to see him. Corey Oates still as the sort of utility, which is, I think, fine. It is a pretty thin bench um, with Smoothie, the 14, Oates, Takora is not going to play big minutes, and then Kobe Hetherington. So, I mean, I, I don't know. The rest, like, I'm not going to get in Corey Jensen or Fletcher Baker, but they should get decent minutes, you would think. Uh, but, you know, Payne Haas will be back in a couple of weeks, I think. So, yeah, first game, a couple of big, a big emissions, honestly. Uh, that's, that's thrown, that's definitely thrown the, uh, the plans out the window slightly. Uh, then we have the Roosters v the Bulldogs. So, let's have a look, see what we got here. The Bulldogs, obviously, yeah, Jacob Preston out, Josh Adokar and Curtis Morin. So, Connor Tracy, well, actually, no, Blake Wilson comes straight back in. Uh, that's right. I forgot that Connor Tracy kept his spot. I was a little surprised. I thought Blake Wilson was was very good um, the first couple of games, but obviously Adekar was going to come back in. And now he's out. So Matt Byrne, Hutchison, King, 
Sam Hughes starts. So Sam Hughes starts. So I guess that's very nice because um, I, I'll have to have a look at cheapies, but I'm probably not going to upgrade my front row at the minute. I'll have, I'll have another look, but I, I, I don't think there was too many other guys barring Xavier Willison who were that, I guess, um, interesting. So Sam Hughes starting. That's, again we'll see Josh Curran comes in which was expected with with Preston being out uh, you know what Curran actually firms as a potential pickup I know I know I'm going to be picking him up a little bit more expensive but I think he could be a very good pickup now um because he's still, I, I've still seen that he's tipped to get the dual front row to RF status which would be lovely and the fact I mean he's playing 80 minutes in the back row I mean, you would expect him to play big minutes in the back row now, maybe shift to the middle at some points, but he's going to play big minutes. He's got a great work rate. I think Curran is a, is a very good pickup this week. He's not... I still don't think he's that expensive. He wouldn't have gone up that that much, I don't think, hopefully. Uh, bench, as you'd expect, so Harrison Edwards, who was pretty good for them last year. He comes in. Liam Knight is back to the bench. And then Katoga, the young... Uh, I've seen a lot of talk about him. I haven't seen much of him, but uh, we'll see how he goes. Liam Martin on the bench is a little bit strange because, yeah, he could he could switch with Hugh. I don't, that's uh, honestly strange. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the Roosters, so the back line, as you'd expect. I know a lot of people are hoping Luke Keary would be dropped, but he is not. Uh, the forward pack... Angus Crichton is starting. There's no Tupanua. He is on the bench. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, first couple of games here have thrown some curveballs. That's for sure. So, I, I mean, I was tossing up between either Tupanua or Bo Fermor. I mean, this just... Tupanua, he's gone. He's gone. He, he was riding his luck. He got that try last week to get a little bit more cash. His break even was, I think it was 36. So it wasn't like, it wasn't super low. It wasn't that high, but coming off the bench, probably playing like 20 minutes. Yep, Tupanua, he is gone. And Bo Fermor is going to live to fight another week. Because <laughs> um, again, Fermor's break even wasn't that high either. So it's 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 not too bad. And at least he's going to play 80 minutes. Um yeah, that's weird. Uh, Angus Crichton's starting. Um, he'll be he'll be an interesting watch. I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't be jumping on Crichton yet, but I do think Crichton, like if I'm being honest, out of like at, in the preseason, Crichton, Sia Wong, and Tupanua, I was definitely most keen on Crichton to get the spot just because he's got the pedigree, he's got the base. And, like, he's not going to be back to his absolute best of yesteryear um, with his attack. But he's always had good base. Like, he's had a great base. He loves taking a carry. He loves an offload. Far better than Tupanua. Sia Wong, obviously, has great base as well. But he was obviously, you know, very young. And the, the position was a little bit up for grabs. So, Angus Crichton coming in, I think, could be a could be a pickup. But do you... <laughs> I wouldn't go this week. But, man, oh, man. Um... Minutes will be funny. Like, is he really going to play now Angus Crichton for like 60 minutes and then take him off for Tupanua? Like, is, is this really what's happening? Like, Trent Robinson, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you're really just like chopping and changing your back row every single week. Is that is that really is that really the best for this team? Like, is that going to help them with their combinations? I don't understand. But yeah, if Crichton looks good, I mean... It'll be an absolute nightmare going to another Roosters back rower, but he probably has the best potential and he will be cheap. I, I, I'll have a... I'll, it'll be interesting to see what his... What he's priced at now and also what his break even is because he's been... He only came off the bench like a couple of times, so I don't even know if he's changed yet. So, yeah, one to watch, I guess. And then... I'll, so, Sam Hughes... I... <laughs> So he's starting at the moment, which looks good on paper, but you do have to remember, I'm pretty sure most weeks, the starting front rower who wasn't Max King played like the first 20 minutes and then didn't play the rest of the game. So I don't know. I mean, it's good that he's starting because it, it, 
there's more chance that he will play that, you know, 40 minute mark rather than 20 or 10, but I don't know. Hopefully he just, hopefully he just has an absolute blinder and uh, they have to pick him. That would be beautiful because if he can make money, I, I would rather not trade him off to another sort of cheapy front rower that also isn't that amazing, but we'll see. We'll see. And then I didn't even mention, but yeah, Terrell May is back to the bench, which, uh, yeah, Lindsey Collins has been named. I thought I thought Collins was out for a couple of weeks, but uh, straight back in. I mean, Terrell May on the bench doesn't, I mean, he's not going to get 80 points in base off the bench, but he'll still, he'll get 50. He'll get 50, 55 at, at uh, sort of his floor. So I think it's still, it's still fine. It's still, it's still, Mighty fine, honestly. Uh, big Terrell May. Moving on, there's been honestly, there's been quite a few, uh, quite a few big ones. Uh, Knights Dragons. I don't think there's too much here to affect us. The only one is Dane Gagai back. So Dane Gagai back, which is good to see. Um, still no. Um, Marju. I think he was gone for a few extra weeks, so. See when he's back. Uh, Jackson Hastings is in for Tyson Gamble, which I mean, I I think I like as a ponger owner. I just think Gamble, I like Gamble. I like his aggression, good defensively, but his kicking game is fucking atrocious, and he isn't. He's just not great with ball in hand. Like I, know, <laughs> I know that I like him, and pretty much everything that makes a good halfback, he, I don't think he's that good at, but. I do, I do, but I do like him. I do. I think he's a good player. I think he would be a great number fourteen. But um, Jackson Hastings, I think, just he can get he can get the ball to the danger weapons better. So we'll see. We'll see that the Hastings and Gamble combo didn't work well at all. But Jack Cogger has done pretty well. So we'll see if Jackson and Cogger can. Uh, can work well together and just get my boy Kalen Ponga into some space. That's all we need. That's all we need. Jaden Braley starts. So, I mean, I'm sort of, I'm sort of locked in now. I've got, I've got Robson. I've got Appy Corusau. I'm probably not going to be trading one of them. I mean, maybe you trade like a Robson, it, like if Bradley starts killing it, you could make money because again, like I never, I didn't want to necessarily have that much money spent in my dummy halves, but it's there now. So, I mean, Bradley could be a good sort of cheapy downgrade-ish player depending how he goes, but we'll we'll see. We'll see the minutes and, and the work rate. Um, I haven't really noticed him off the bench as well. I haven't really been paying attention that closely to Braley. He hasn't played big minutes, that's for sure. I know that. Kai Pierce Paul is still starting. Beautiful. Crossland at the 14. And uh, Dylan Lucas, the 18th man. Um, I actually thought he was pretty good in the centers last week, honestly. I'm, I'm surprised he's not getting a bench spot. I think, I think Lucas is... Uh, I think he's a little stiff. I think he's been a little, a uh, little stiff here to be sort of dropped from the team because of uh, what did he have? Like a head knock, wasn't it? He had a head knock and then he was just gone. Like he, he lost his spot. Which I mean, fair. They probably were always looking at KPP to to take over, but I think it's a little rough not having uh, Dylan Lucas on the bench. I mean, I'm happy as a K, uh, KPP owner, but. It is what it is. Uh, the Dragons, anything to note here? Um, forward pack, Jack DeBellon now starts. I know they, every every week they're like flipping the forwards around. Like, I mean, I, I'm not interested in any of the forwards, so it's fine. I mean, Tom Eisenhuth, like, honestly, if you started with him in your center wing, he's actually done pretty well, but I don't know. He, I'm still not, not that interested still. Blake Laurie on the bench this week, and uh, yeah, for Tyler Mariner. Harme Sally is is back out of the team, which is surprising. I mean, he wasn't amazing last week, but I still think he is better than a few of these guys, and he just needs a bit of a run, but I'm not a coach, so that's fine. Uh, but yeah, pretty uneventful of that team list. Then we have the Rabbits Warriors. There's one position I'm looking for, and it's going to be... Well, there's a, oh, there was a couple, actually. That's right. So, Chance has been named. I mean, again, keep an eye on late mail. 
you never know chance could pull up a little lame in the in the coming days and Torpiki might still get a sniff at the fullback spot but yeah obviously if if chance plays Torpiki, he he's straight out of the team well we'll talk more about that in the in the preview for round uh six or round five i should say we're getting ahead of ourselves but yeah it's good it's good to see chance back it's great to see him back tour check obviously goes back to center and the other one thompson um i mean <laughs> alex johnston being out jacob gagai we were hoping as holders that he would get a, another crack um, on the wing. I, Dude, I I don't really know what more Jacob Gagai could have done in the Vegas game. Like, he was solid. He scored a nice try. He was safe. He, he, got his, he got the work done. Like, I don't know. Like, Thompson, I guess, like, he's a bigger body. But, fuck, I don't know. Like, I... Uh, oh, well. It is what it is. Jacob Gagai, he's just, he's, he's definitely down the, uh, the totem pole for, uh, options, I guess. And that's, that's just what it is. Uh, the rest of the team for the Rabbits, Dean Hawkins still seven, um, forward pack as is, obviously still no Jai, Jai Arrow, Moale Cappy on the bench, it's fine. The Warriors, so... Lusik on the bench, normal, normal. Um, Tamara Martin comes in at the six for Harris Tavita, which is interesting. So Harris Tavita is actually out of the team. He was the fourteen, um, and he's been dropped because Freddie Lusik comes back in. That seems a. I, I got to be honest. I'm I'm a little surprised. Like. Why would you not have Harris Tavita as your 14 then? Because, I mean, Harris Tavita can play dummy half. Like, he, he's a good enough defender. He can play a, a dummy half because you're going to want waiting in to play most of the game anyway. It's just if he if he cops a head knock or something. And then Harris Tavita can also cover more positions than Freddie Lusick. So, I, I, I don't know. I feel like Harris Tavita is one of those guys that is sort of perfect for a 14 utility role and honestly i thought he did enough to probably get the number six but i mean tomorrow martin obviously very good player as well they've they've got a lot of depth in the five eight spot so it's good to see tomorrow martin back in uh i think yeah he, he's a very skillful player so yeah it's not it's not bad but i'm i'm a little surprised that yeah harris davida is not in the in the 17 so we'll see what happens there the rest of the team is what you'd expect um, yeah, nothing, nothing different, and yeah, great to see Clockstad back. I mean, it'll probably help like their outside men because Clockstad is is very, he's a very good fullback. Um, to a picky, did great work, but Clockstad is is he is a bit better for sure. Uh, Seagulls Panthers. Uh, I don't think there's again not too much out of these two. I mean, Tommy Talao has has got the number two jersey still. He's probably a cheapie that's gonna get. He's gonna slip through the cracks. I think. Like I, I, I taking on Panthers now this week. Like you could bring him in, but I don't. I, I don't know. I just don't think he's really worth it now at this point. I mean, Jason Saab will be back fairly soon. And, yeah, I just, I don't know. I wouldn't be going to Leo at this point, probably. Um, rest of it is as you would expect. Corey Waddell was the guy I couldn't think of uh, when I was doing my review in the last video. He's not, I feel like that's happened a couple of times with Corey Waddell. I've just completely blanked on his name, but it is what it is. The team is unchanged. The Panthers... Uh, it looks like, yeah, Fisher-Harris is back, which is, I, I guess it's potentially bad for Liam Henry because Fisher-Harris will probably play bigger minutes. But again, like him and Leota don't necessarily play huge minutes unless they really need to. So I still think Liam Henry is is a fine second front row forward. I mean, we'll see this week will be a good, uh, a good calibration. Maybe back from like 50 points back to like 40 points, but... I, I, that's still fine with me, honestly. 40 points for a, for a cheapy front row forward. Sign me up, absolutely. And then, yeah, Brad Schneider, obviously still in the seven. Nothing else doing there. Taylor May, 
I, I know a lot of people are selling him. I'm still I'm still holding strong. I think he'll I think he'll come good, but he's been stinking it up the last couple of weeks. That's for sure. Dolphins v Tigers. So we'll see. Okay, so Jaden Sullivan has been named in the six instead of Finu. I think uh, I think people were maybe excited and hoping for Finu getting a getting a debut, but it makes sense to bring Sullivan in, the more experienced uh, number six there. The Dolphins. The only change will be Max Plath being out, and it's uh, it will be yeah Ray Stone will come straight back in. The Ford Pack is as you'd expect. Kurt Donahue comes onto the bench. I don't think he was there last week with Ray Stone. Uh, and then the Tigers. Okay, so Ladu Finu, he is the 14, which is exciting. So we'll get a we'll get a little glimpse of uh, of some young talent of the Tigers once again. Alex Twile being back is is nice to see. Obviously, he copped a, a nasty head knock a couple of weeks ago, so him being back is nice. Who who's dropped out actually? Must be a couple of guys. Um, the rest of the starting pack is as you'd expect once again, and uh, and the back line, who who's out then? Just Galvin. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, again, not not too much else to really say about that one. Cowboys Titans. I think these teams will be pretty much as expected. I don't think there's going to be any major differences. Actually, no, there will be for the Titans. So the Titans, obviously, Sammy being out injured. Who who else is... So Harley Smith Shields comes in and also Jojo for Fita. So Sammy and... Fuck, who's the other winger? <laughs> Who was the other winger, bro? Am I going crazy? Who was it? Um. Oh, Cam Pereira. So they, they've dropped. Yeah, uh, Luffy Cam Pereira has been dropped. I mean, honestly, like, fair enough. Like, he's been a bit underwhelming for sure. And I think Jojo Fafita, I thought, was excellent last year. So it's it's good to see him back. And I mean, Harley, Harley Smith Shields, I don't. I've never been a massive fan, but he is a fairly safe winger. He's got a bit of experience, so we'll see how he goes. Um, Jaden Campbell, obviously, still in the number one. Good to see him back for the second week now. Hopefully, he... I, I, I thought he was pretty good. I mean, he looked pretty electric still last week, it hit, and he'll just he'll just get better with some of the combos. Um, Tanner Boyd's still there. They, they just will not drop Tanner Boyd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamin Jolliffe at prop still. Aaron Clark starts at lock. Fermor, Cleese Okay, so Fafita's still on the bench, which is interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> I feel like he'll probably come into the starting side come game day. I mean, he, he played pretty big minutes. He had good work rate in that last game, so I'm, I'm a, little, a little surprised he's not starting. But Aaron Clark starting at lock. I don't know what his price is, but he was off the bench last week, wasn't he? Uh, also, Pahulu is into the side. So, a bit of change of the, the Titans. And then the, the Cowboys, I think they're the same. They still run with Granville and Gazeski on the bench. It's just fucking crazy, but... I don't understand Granville still being there, bro. Uh, then, yeah, the forward pack, as you'd expect. Backline, as you'd expect as well. Yeah, 1-17. to I mean, I think they'll have a better performance than they did against the Bronx, but it is against the Titans, so I wouldn't read too much into it. Raiders, Eels. So we'll see this one. So Zach Hosking out. And then the Parramatta Eels. Blaze Talangi is still in the sixth jersey. I do see Dejan Arce. He's obviously in the extended. James Schiller still on the wing. So, yeah, Albert Hopawade, that burn. Um, I, I mean, Schiller, this is his second game, I think. So, I mean, I don't know. Potentially, Schiller could be a cheapy downgrade uh, next week if he keeps the spot. But again, like, just... You wouldn't be confident he's going to keep the spot at all. The rest of the back line, Ethan Strange looking good, Fogarty. 
Danny Levi, fucking cheapy of the year candidate here. <laughs> Joe Tarpany. Joe Tarpany is one. I, I actually, I am keen to have a look at Tarpany's price because he had a couple of shockers, but I thought he was he was getting back to his best last week. He looked pretty good, and I I wouldn't. I mean, I'm not gonna probably do it. Obviously, I can't do it this week, but Tarpany is definitely a guy I'm gonna have a have a close look at coming in the few weeks over that origin period and honestly for the run home uh mariotta comes into the back row for hosking so obviously ali whitehead's still out um and then S- simi sungi is onto the bench sami solo is mariotta really gonna play in the back row like i <laughs> He probably can, like he's a good young forward, but he looks very much like a middle forward. So I'm, again, this is probably going to change come come game day. I, I would expect Sasangi to go into the back row. I just, why, why, why fuck around with the team so much? I don't understand. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Um, okay, so yeah, no, Albert Hopoade on the extended bench. So yeah, Trey Mooney's still not getting a run. Like what? <laughs> I feel like Trey Mooney was, every time he's had a chance, he's looked really good. He, he was exceptional in the trials. Like, I don't understand what it takes to get into this side at times. Like, I, they got good depth, but like, Trey Mooney is a, he's a, he's a kid of the future. Surely he's better than a fucking, I don't know, Solo or Sasangi, right? Corey Horsburgh, be good for the run last week. Didn't have his best game, but you know, he's going to improve. And then the Eels... So, like I said, Talangi is still there. Sivo's still back. Um, Sean Lane, Madison, Hopgood. So, Madison comes into the back row for, what, Talangi? He's going back to the bench? Yeah, Kalman's back to the bench. William Reed Greggs on the interchange. Luca Moretti. So, no Brennan Hand, which is good for... Joey Lussick owners and then Joe off in Gowie. So it's a it's a big it's a big bench. They don't have any they don't have any utility really. I mean Kelmer's the only guy there that can play in the back line at a pinch, but yeah, no no utility there. And then we look to Jane uh, to John Arcy on the extended. So I st- I still think the fact Blaze Talangi has been named, I think you do have to get him, but it is a little bit dangerous if they lose this game like and he doesn't have a great performance then he could easily find himself out of the team for RC I wouldn't be shocked to see it and then that's it that's the team list so the first couple of games had quite a few curveballs and then the rest of it pretty pretty stock standard but yeah it's, it's definitely changed my plans going into trade so it'll be an interesting round five preview now because I, th- I was pretty locked in. <laughs> I was pretty locked in to my trades and probably using a boost. But now, now we got a bit of flexibility, which I do like. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and comment and stay tuned for more. We'll be coming up with the round five preview pretty shortly. So yeah, see you guys in the next one.